Dr. Jaffe, there's a client who's asking that, and they say, I know calcium balance with one-to-one -one ratio with magnesium helps the body to assimilate in a healthy way, but I've also heard that it's better to supplement with magnesium and get calcium only from the diet instead of supplements. What are your thoughts on this, particularly uh, regarding cardiovascular and you know artery hardening, especially, et cetera? Well, when, when we get into atherosclerosis and hardening of the arteries and risk of cardiovascular catastrophe, you bring me back to my early days at NIH, where we studied models of heart disease in Yucatan pigs and foxhound dogs. And we studied Yucatan pigs because they have a cardiovascular system very similar to a human cardiovascular system. And we studied foxhound dogs because they don't get atherosclerosis natively. And if you see it in a dog, you probably caused it through the diet. We learned a lot of things. We learned that selenium, as in selenomethionine, is essential to make the vitamin E active and to help the flow of electrons that become the energy molecule ATP in the mitochondria. We learned a lot about the fact that oxidized fats, oxidized cholesterol, and oxidized LDL are profoundly harmful to the body, promote fatty streaks that become plaque, that become vulnerable plaque, it's an elegant story. What it comes down to is more good and less bad. In regard to calcium-magnesium balance, <clears throat> almost everyone in America gets too much calcium. Almost everyone. If you eat an alkaline whey diet, you still get enough calcium from your green leafy vegetables and other sources, including sea vegetables and seeds and nuts and fruits and beyond. And if you have any ultra processed foods, you certainly are getting too much calcium and sodium to little magnesium and potassium. So my recommendation is to supplement with magnesium and choline citrate and let your diet be the source of calcium. A lot of attention has been paid to calcium because it was easy to measure the calcium in the artery, and that's called a calcium score, often done today. It's not very expensive, but I don't think it's worth much because the vulnerable plaque may not have calcium in it, and what calcified plaque indicates is a repair deficit. So if you put your immune defense and repair system into repair mode, you can reverse hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, plaque. Dr. Dean Ornish <clears throat> has shown this, doing before and after angiograms. You wouldn't do this clinically, but for research purposes, it was very important for him to show that his lifestyle program about what you eat and drink, think and do, and how you supplement, and how you live, and how you move, and how you stretch, and so forth, allowed him to document in a very rigorous way that heart disease is a choice, that heart disease is a lifestyle choice, an epigenetic lifestyle choice, and you can choose to avoid heart disease. I was reminded yesterday in a conversation with an excellent cardiologist <clears throat> uh, up in the Detroit area, Dr. Kahn, and he reminded me that Paul Dudley White a very famous cardiologist who helped develop the electrocardiogram, was doctor to the presidents and genuinely an outstanding human being. And he was still lecturing when I was a student in the 1960s. And Paul Dudley White pointed out that a heart attack below the age of 80 is a catastrophe that should be avoided. After 80, well... We'll see how much good comes in and how much bad comes in. So it's a choice. You can read literature that says you should balance your calcium with magnesium. And I'm saying from your diet, you'll get plenty of calcium 
and you're probably not getting enough magnesium because magnesium is needed in every reaction where B complex comes in. Magnesium is needed to keep the proton gradient so that the battery of the cell can produce the ATP and not render the cell too acidic. Magnesium is essential to make ATP work. You can have all the pro-ATP, but if it doesn't have one molecule of magnesium for every molecule of ATP, uh, the ATP doesn't work. So we have many indications through chronic illness that people are deficient in protective antioxidants, buffering minerals, B-complex, omega-3 fats, and other essential required nutrients in the 21st century to deal with the stress and toxins of today. So I wouldn't worry too much about balancing out calcium and magnesium. I would supplement with magnesium and choline citrate, and I would trust that I was getting enough calcium from my diet. Now, I would like to point out that along with many other minerals, we have calcium and magnesium in several of our products to facilitate the bioavailability, to improve the functionality, and to make sure that you are getting enough of these essential minerals, because both calcium and magnesium are essential, but so are many other minerals that work synergistically. And we want you to know that they are balanced out in the PERC products.